Hello. In today's session, let us try to understand the I2C protocol for through waveforms. So for this, we have a small setup. The STM32 uh, Discovery F7 F4 Discovery board uh, is having an onboard uh, audio DAC peripheral. So we are going to use this to learn I2C in our case. Let us look at a little bit of theory before we drive into the waveform. So I2C has two lines, the SDA and SCL. From this, we understand, unlike UART, this is a synchronous serial protocol, which is driven by the master's clock. So we have a clock line and a common data line, and the speed can be either 100 kilohertz or 400 kilohertz. Uh, let us uh, have the bare minimal setup of 100 kilohertz and 7-bit addressing. There is also a 10-bit addressing system, but we shall use a 7-bit addressing mode. Now, just uh, before we look at the waveform, which will be very easy, let us also look at a little more of uh, theory. Now, we said this uh, DAC, audio DAC, CS43L22. Uh, usually, in order to establish any communication, uh, we will perform a simple read action. So we can also learn I2C by performing a simple read activity. For that, uh, we use the on-chip uh, revision there is always uh, uh, something like this, uh, which we can read only and uh, try to uh, validate the communication. So uh, here uh, in, in this uh, DAC, we also have such a facility. Um, there is a register, a, a set of eight bits, a a one byte register, which we can read uh, in order to uh, um, get the chip ID and revision. So the, the eight bits are as follows. There are five bits of chip ID and three bits of revision. Uh, this will correspond to 0xE3 based on this table uh, 11100 and 00, uh, 0 Okay, and the data sheet also mentions that uh, uh, the I2C read um, uh, flow. Now here uh, they have mentioned quite a few steps. Uh, the clock line continuously supplies clock for us and the data line has a start condition. We shall see all this in detail, but just let us uh, trust me and uh, let us check this out. So the data line has a start condition and uh, you have some address along with uh, a write notation. If you look at this, we have uh, six uh, bits here followed by another bit. So this is a seven bit. Uh, in this sequence, the chip manufacturer has mentioned the address, the six bit hard coded address for this chip to be 100101. And uh, the AD pin here is given to us in case we have two such chips connected to our microcontroller. In order to distinguish between them, we have one line. And this is also grounded in our case. Uh, and as a whole, if we look at uh, the chip address, it is 0x94, uh, which corresponds to 1001 and 0100. These, this is the eight bits, uh, including uh, the, the LSB, uh, which we assume to be right. Okay, cool. So now, um, after uh, providing uh, um, this is provided by the master. So this, after this is done, uh, there is something called ACK. We shall look at that. And after that, uh, we need to provide the address from where we have to read. So the address of uh, this register, this particular chip ID register. Now let us search for that. So chip ID is at address 01. Yeah. So address 01 uh, is what is expected here. So all zeros uh, followed by a final one. And uh, there is going to be an ACK uh, provided by the DAC. The DAC will acknowledge that address. And after that, we have to stop the communication. Again, we have to start. And uh, uh, this time we have to perform a read that is giving the seven bits, the same seven bits as we had given on right. The last bit is going to be one, okay? And after that, we can read all the eight bits. Now, let us run the STM32 program, which does this. Uh, please note that if you are using STM32 discovery board, you need to also enable, uh, that is pull this line high PD4, which is the reset pin for the onboard audio DAC. I had a trouble with uh, that for a lot of time. Okay, uh, a couple of minutes maybe. And now let us stop and zoom in to the waveform. Yes, so as the data sheet mentions, we performed a write and we got an ACK and then we wrote the uh, register address, the 01. For that also we got an ACK. And after that, uh, we requested for a read by giving the address and we got an ACK and we got to read data by supplying clock. Let us look at the conditions. So during uh, idle state, both the I2C lines are pulled up by the external pull up resistors. So if you leave the pins floating, the lines are going to be high. And when the lines are high, all of a sudden, if you if you were to write a bit banking driver or if you are going to explain this for an interview, uh, this is expected out of you. So this is a start condition wherein uh, the clock line is high and when the clock is high, uh, the data line is pulled from high to low. 
yes this is the start condition only during start and stop conditions you will toggle the that is you will play with the data line when the clock is high during every other operation you will change the data line when the clock is low okay so now let us try to go step by step so first is the start condition wherein uh, when the clock is high the data is pulled from high to low and this is followed by the 7 bit address uh, which here if we decode uh, this side is the msb and slowly the lsb so the first bit is 1 zero, zero. you have to just uh, uh, during the high edge you have to see the data so 1001 zero, zero, one, which is 9 and 0100 zero, 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 which is 4 so 4a corresponds to this uh it is 4a is 100 okay 4a is this but basically uh, it is uh, the same 94 with one bit shifted so it is just showing the uh, 7 bit address alone as 8 bits okay and uh, for that okay so please i'm sorry don't get diverted now I'll come back so 100 uh, 010 this is the 7 bits and since we are performing a write now again this is 0 so this corresponds to the 8 bits so after supplying these 8 bits the master needs to supply a one another clock line clock signal for which if there is really a slave with this configuration it is going to pull the line low and that is an acknowledged condition so you had given a start bit and uh, the write operation for which you got an acknowledgement after that again you give uh, the address on the, the address from which you want to read although you have to read you have to write the address first so in this sequence uh, uh, you again uh, you don't have to give a start condition uh, you are directly going to give eight clock cycles now and uh, uh, the eight bits are uh, the seven bits are zero and the lsb the least significant bit is uh, one now this uh, makes uh, eight bits and after that again you have to give one more clock uh, in which you got an acknowledgement this is uh, this is the clock and the line is pulled low so line being low did we see this uh, read operation along with you let me decode so 1001 uh, then 0101 do you see this bit this is uh, the one for a read and for that we got another acknowledgement here uh, by giving another clock we got the line to be low uh, so this is a positive acknowledgement after that uh, you can now supply 8 bits of clock it is going to give out the register contents uh, again you gave 8 uh, clock bits Um, for which you got a 1110 which translates to e and 011 0011 basically 0011 which translates to 3 and after that uh, you are the master and you can issue a stop condition uh, by just uh, having the clock line high and uh, um, yeah this is the additional clock you are basically giving a knack and then a stop so uh, issue another clock and for that you keep the data line high when the data line is uh, low during that phase it is an acknowledge condition the ne negative acknowledgement is basically uh, the opposite of acknowledgement having the data line high and after this uh, when yet another clock uh, signal uh, you just uh, pull the i mean release the data line um, when the clock is high uh, release the data line from low to high this will indicate a stop condition so this is a summary of the sequence and uh, this is the waveform i hope this uh, was a little clear to you yes uh, in uh, there are various schemes so in i2c we shall discuss this was a simple blocking right uh, there is interrupt mode and dma mode and uh, there are various other serial protocols we shall discuss in future videos thank you